Joe Rustin and Eric from the Vera Union. Eric, how you doing, brother? Good, brother. How you doing, man? I'm doing real good. You guys are uh, rolling through my old neck of the woods. I think you guys are in Colorado this week. Got a couple of shows yeah, with man. Cavo. And then, yeah, a, man. Then, of course, you're going back to my uh, previous haunt, Phoenix, for uh, the, the Big Mass Chaos show with Godsmack and whatnot this weekend, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nice. You guys have been keeping really busy on the road. And before, yeah, man. Before yeah. I forget to ask, because I also write for the Boise Examiner, i got to ask you, you guys are playing every city in Backwater Berg like twice, it seems, but no Boise. <laughs> what no. gives? Dude, you're busting my balls. Uh, you know what, dude? We, we love Boise. We played there a few times. And uh, you know what? I'm sure we will make it there. Uh, it's just a matter of time, man. You know, you can only get so many places at once. And uh, unfortunately, we haven't been routed through there, and I think we actually driven by it. So, but we will definitely be there sooner than later, man. That would be awesome, of course. So let's talk about the new album, "Divide the Black and Sky." That's what we're all about right now. This is your first. Yeah, this is your first with the new label. How did you guys yeah. connect with Rocket Science Red for the new record? Well, I mean, uh, uh, after departing, you know, we kind of uh, went our separate ways with Universal Records. And uh, we we pr- had produced our own record at that time. We were sitting on a record that was already completely recorded and everything. And we just needed to find a home for it. And uh, we looked at quite a few places to, to do that. And, uh, you know, we uh, Kevin Day, the president of the record label, you know, we kind of uh, talked with him and stuff. And it just uh, just seemed to work. His, his ideas and, and, and our ideas, they just connected together, you know. And... Um, it's actually a co-venture with him. It's, you know, we're doing it pretty much independently as well. So, uh, you know, we're just working in a big partnership together. And it's, it's good, man. It's a very open-ended deal. You know, they don't make us do anything we don't want to do. We do a lot of work ourselves. You know, we don't have people telling us who do you shoot our music videos, how, what's supposed to be in our music videos, what singles should be released. You know, so it's really, uh, it's really nice to have that freedom especially when it comes to uh, releasing your art to the public. Right. Well, it's really become sort of a DIY thing with the state of the industry these days. You're almost, in some ways, for younger bands you know, that are fresh out, to have sort of a smaller label where you're doing some of it yourself rather than being under the thumb of a major label. 100%, man. I mean, we, we've seen both, both sides of the coin. And, I mean... Uh, Especially the uh, the temperature, the climate of the of the music industry, man. It's uh, it's all about do it yourself now. It's all about getting that music out there and, and controlling it yourself, and and it's so feasible to do so. You know, it's uh, that's what it's all about nowadays, dude. Is you know being your own creator and controller. Absolutely. So divide the black and sky seems almost poetic with the departure of Fid and Roots. Uh, the two left the band after the new album was recorded, is my understanding. In yep, whatever yep. in whatever manner you're willing to share, because I don't want to, you know, <laughs> no, no, dig no, up no, wounds. I'm perfectly fine talking about it, that's for sure. So yeah. what what can you tell oh. us about the change and the departure? Um, you know what, dude? It, uh, there's, there's a lot of downtime within leaving the, re- the record label and finding the new home and, and recording the new record and stuff. And in that time, you know, people grow apart, man, and people have different views and different thoughts the way their life should be lived and stuff and Finn Roots you know uh, dude they're, they're some of my best friends to this day I talk to them at least once every two or three days and you know they just uh, felt the need to uh, to leave and pursue different avenues and that's great that's that's perfectly fine you know they, and they and they contributed a lot you know and helped out on this record so right. and uh, it's, uh, we got a new guy a bass player named Winston he actually used to be our old bass tech so he kind of just fell right into place. He's already kind of in the circle of family and stuff. So, so it, close uh, to it home ended then. up uh, exactly. And then we actually we didn't get another guitar player. We felt at that point just kind of keep it a four piece, and uh, that was kind of interesting on my end because there's two guitar players on the record and stuff. So I kind of had to get really creative and uh, do a lot more dancing around on the pedal board and stuff and uh, switching up parts and stuff. It was a challenge, you know, that alone. But it was cool to uh, to take that on. It's, Pretty, pretty fun right as a guitar player you really have to own everything you do now because there's there's no mistakes with with nobody else there to back you yeah totally but i guarantee mistakes will be made <laughs> 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 i'm just joking well maybe not joking but you know you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's only rock and roll it's all about the energy it is you man you know, nobody nobody nobody's perfect dude rock and roll isn't perfect you know so 
Well, you guys obviously had a lot going out in the process between Against the Grain in 2009 and the new album. Right. There were a lot of hurdles and stuff to get this album out. So tell us a little bit uh, about everything that sort of went on. I mean, this album is obviously darker, harder edged. I'm assuming the right. adversity of all of that had an effect on the sound. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, there was a point where we didn't have a record label, and I mean, we didn't have uh, a, a band, you know. So it, there were some dark times. There was times where we didn't even necessarily know if this record was even going to get see the light of day, you know, if anyone's anyone's going to hear it, you know. So I mean, uh, or, you know, it's, and it does. You can hear it on the record and stuff. It's kind of somewhat of a concept record, you know. The, the battle of of getting through those those dark moments, and uh, we're just happy that. You know, it's gone to the point where we have been able to release it, and, you know, we're a month and a half into touring and a month and a half after the release of the record, you know, and it's really cool to be so far away from home and, uh, you know, where you created this art and you, you travel, you know, to the other side of the country and, and people are singing your lyrics and stuff. That's, uh, that's you know, it's priceless, and uh, that's what it's all about. That's why we're here, you know. Absolutely. That's what you do it all for. Now, Brian Howes, who's worked with so many great, great bands, also a great writer uh, as well as a producer, he helped you yeah. guys out a little bit on the single Bitter End. Did he help um, write or produce anything else on the record? Yeah, you know, I mean, he kind of ties into everything as well, because after Fitting Roots left, it was, uh, it was, we were so burnt out, Crispin and I, and we felt like the, the record wasn't totally completed, but yet we were so burnt out with dealing with everything, and Brian Howes had helped us produce a couple of tracks on it, on Against the Green. So uh, we kind of found it fitting maybe to go and uh, see if he was interested in doing the track or not. And uh, he was down, and, uh, you know, we got in the studio, and, uh, you know, lo and behold, became Bitter End. So and, uh, it kind of fit the whole, you know, the whole concept of uh, what we were going through and stuff. So, Tell us a little bit about the video you guys shot for, for the song. Yeah, we shot it with a director named Aaron Veal and uh, he's a buddy of ours from Vancouver mm -hmm. shot it kind of in a, in a cool warehouse uh, you know in the, within the depths of Vancouver British Columbia and uh, you know we had fun with it you know he was uh, we literally sat down in a room just kind of came up with some ideas what the video should be and uh, we just you know rolled with it went with it didn't put too much thought into it you know and just shot it had some fun shot it you know 18 hours and uh, it, was, uh, it was fun <laughs> It come out the way you wanted it to was I mean to sort of give you the vision you guys had for it. For sure, for sure, definitely. So lose, losing two of your best friends out of the band like that obviously you know changes things up a little bit. Has it helped bring you and Crispin even closer than you already were? Yeah, I mean you know what at the end of the day that's kind of how this whole band began was Crispin and I's vision. You know, so it, it was it was weird and kind of surreal to find us. Six years later, through a record deal, through, you know, all the stuff we had been through, kind of back at square one again, you know, so uh, it was uh, it was kind of crazy, you know, sitting there back in Vancouver, literally without a band, you know, it was very surreal to have to pretty much, you know, rebuild, obviously Neil stuck with us and stuff, and, and he, you know, he's foundation of this band as well, and uh, helped, helped us get through this and stuff, so... It was a definitely an experience, you know, and there was no hard feelings. I can't stress that enough, you know. Right. Fitting roots are some of my best friends to this day. Now, your guy, the lyrics that you guys write are, are very relatable. Talk about everyday life, adversities, emotions. I'd like to ask you about a couple songs if you've if you got a couple more minutes. Um, yeah, I do, for sure, man. Inside Our Scars, what can you tell me in the backstory on that song? Inside Our Scars, it's... Uh, you know, it's open for interpretation, obviously, you know, by self-interpretation. But, I mean, uh, one thing we always try to steer away from is always writing about relationships and stuff. But this is the one song that is very more leaning towards that relationship thing, you know. It's, uh, you know, the lyrics are so close, but yet so far, you know, it's, you just get to that point when you're in that relationship where it just keeps on coming around to the same old fight, the same old song and dance where you just got to, you know... It's all in, in, in laying in our scars, you know. It's, all the issues are, are scars that can't necessarily be healed. So is, it, is there really any point to it anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. now, there's a story behind every song, but on every album there's one or two songs that have, like, an interesting or intriguing or unusual story. Are there one or two songs like that on the album that have a good story to share? Yeah, 
Older line was kind of a cool one because that really, that was when we had a lot of wind in our sails. So we were really angry. We, we freshly just left the record label. We were standing strong and proud. And Borderline, we had actually written on the road. And so we had actually road tested that song and stuff. And literally, we would play that song every night. We played differently because we would, we would play that night. The next day, we'd write. We'd change, like, the pre-chorus. we change the chorus or something. And then we would literally, five minutes before we go on, go, hey, guys, okay, so everyone knows this is how the, this is how the chorus goes now. And literally, everyone, you know, every, the song was just constantly evolving every day and stuff. So that song really had a natural band growth to it, which is, which is really cool to, uh, to experience. You know, the other song I'd have to say, for me personally, is one of my personal favorites, is Buried in the Ground. Um, just the storyline and stuff, I, it hits close to my heart. And, and uh, you know, I, that's the one I kind of, uh, you know, reach, or not reach, kind of feel the closest to, you know. And uh, I, I remember the day when we started writing it. We were in El Paso playing a festival, and Kristen and I were kind of backstage, you know, just uh, screwing around on some acoustic guitars and, and kind of came up with it and stuff. So it was, uh, it's always been a, a very vivid memory for me, that moment. It's always nice to hear those stories and everything. It makes the songs more special to to the listeners and everything. So, and uh, I got to bust your chops again for a second. Our own uh, our own Maven Renee wrote the review of of the album on Metalholic, and uh, okay. she, she wanted to get she wanted me to give you crap because uh, she never got any love for her review like all the others oh, that you've been posting sh- on the site. So. Shit. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll you know what I'll I'll, I'll get that posted up there, dude. <laughs> Metal club, dude, it's going up today. <laughs> I feel I feel bad. I mean, that's weird that it slipped through the cracks like that. But one of the things I wanted to ask you about because we were talking about the DIY thing a little bit mi- uh, a minute ago. Um, social mm-hmm. media impact. When you're a DIY mm-hmm. band, obviously you got to get out there. You're using the Facebook and the Twitter and everything. How important is that stuff to you guys? And how hard is it for you guys to maintain that when you're so busy on the road? Right. I mean, we try we try and do a lot of it. You know, within the, within our circle of of the band. I mean, I, I've always had a little bit of an issue with it because I love the mystique of, of rock music and I love the mystery and stuff, and I feel like the Internet has taken a lot of that mystery and mystique away. That being said, these are all great tools to get out there and, get, and, and, and create more of a fan base and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, it's always got to be done tastefully, I feel, you know. I mean, right. it's, it's, a, it's a tough struggle for me personally. You know, I know bands... There's some bands that just love it and just hold themselves out to Twitter and to Facebook and stuff, but I always feel like that loses just loses a bit of mystique and mysteriousness. I just, you know, that, you know, you, you never used to be able to, you know, it's, it's just a little weird with me, but I mean, that being said, I'm not, I'm not slagging in any of, any of these social outfits at all. I think they're all great for the growth of bands and stuff. And I mean, you know, we have a couple of people that help us out that are, that are close to us and, and friends of ours that help us, you know, on a few of the things to help us maintain it and keep these structures going. I've talked to a few bands in the last uh, few weeks, as a matter of fact, about this very topic, that there really are no rock stars anymore because the way yeah. the industry's changed, that whole mystique yeah. of the rock star and stuff that I grew up with yeah. is gone. And yeah, that, I like that. I, lo- I like that darkness of, of, you know, of a band that there's no more mystery. It's all just exposed and everyone's a freaking whore and wants to be on every picture and website you know and it just kind of takes i feel like uh, the music definitely suffers suffers from and i feel like that's kind of half the reason why not half maybe a quarter of the reason why the uh, music industry is where it is right now you know do you think it though gives you no more mistakes. does it give you a better feel for your fans and and what they want and a better connection to them though definitely 100 percent. i think that's one of the positives of it is the fact that you can uh at the end of the day, to, you know, talk and, and, and get to know your fans. I mean, that's always a nice thing, you know. Absolutely. So, for the last question here, then this is a this is a question from a fan. It says, okay. uh, Crispin has been rocking that mohawk for years. How in the hell does he keep it so perfect? <laughs> yeah, he chops up Viagra and then snorts it. Just kidding. <laughs> um, you, yeah, yeah, you know what, dude. He, he he gets it everywhere we go, and, and it's actually become quite a, you know, it's almost like a legend or something, or we should name it, you know. It, it has its own entity. But uh, lots of hairspray, and, you know, he does it maybe once every four or five days, and it just stays up for like four or five days. 
wow. he sleeps on it and everything. Yeah. Must make it so, hard to I, sleep. So all Yeah, right. so so I've heard. I mean I hope that answer clarifies the Mohawk question. <laughs> <laughs> well then I will ask you my last question then. You guys were talking on your Twitter, I think, that you were cruising in the bus the other night watching Scarface. You guys must watch oh, yeah, a, yeah. you guys must watch a lot of movies and stuff on the bus. Uh, are you a big movie buff and is there a certain type of film that you're really into or you know what, dude? I mean, I, I'm a movie. I, I do like getting into my stuff, but I'm also like really set in my ways. Like, I've I like a, a group of movies and stuff, and I always just kind of put them on repeat. It's kind of like I don't know that familiar, you know, familiar face. Uh, Neil's a huge. The drummer's a huge, huge movie critic. Crispin is a huge movie critic. They they definitely outfold me, but I mean, I like my old my older movies. You know, like I mean, we always put on like the Goonies and stuff, or like you know, Dumb and Dumber and stuff like that. You know, the classics. Huh? Maybe, yeah. You know, maybe you know, we're just kind of makes you feel like you're at home or something, or you know, something like that. There's some sort of familiar taste there that you know is uh, reassuring, or you know. Eric Schrader of the oh. Veer Union, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Bring us up to date on what's going on. We look forward to seeing cool. you out there on the tour because it doesn't look like you guys are stopping anytime soon. <laughs> and, not uh, at all, not at all, man. Yeah. Be, be safe out there. The new album, everybody go out and get it. Divide the Black and Sky. Buy it. Don't illegally yeah. download it. Support the artist. And we'll right talk on. to you soon. Thanks for having us, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Take care. All right, man. Peace out.